Hello, it's Tanji from Paper Crafting Australia. Uh, thank you. If you have come back to join me for the third time today, we are trying very valiantly to try and get technology to play nicely with us today. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you have stuck around uh, to try and get to the uh, live tutorial today, but it seems Telstra Internet does not want to play nicely. So I'm now hotspotting from Telstra Internet. So let's see how long this lasts. Um, if you're in the Facebook or YouTube feeds, give us a quick little thumbs up, quick little message. Let me know. It looks like YouTube's still not getting what it wants, but uh, Facebook, as far as Margaret's concerned, seems to be nice and loud and clear. Uh, so we might get uh, we might get a tutorial after all. Um, of course, this is all stressing me out because I have to be out of the house at four o'clock this afternoon to go uh, to my boyfriend's uh, birthday dinner, which his birthday was earlier in the week. But uh, yeah, look, uh, <laughs> it looks like we've got at least a few a few people who have come back and joined us. Uh, if you're in the YouTube feed, if it's not going so well, head over to Facebook. It seems to be going fairly smoothly over there, as far as I can tell. Oh, technology, isn't it delightful? Um, yeah, nothing had changed with my settings or my computer setup or anything like that between last week's tutorial and this week's tutorial. It just seems like Telstra Internet uh, is not playing friendly today and the um, yeah our, our home internet isn't uploading it's basically uploading at about two megapixels uh, per second or megabits per second and my phone internet is doing 21 megabits per second upload so 21 off a phone versus two off a home internet connection Hmm, might have to have words with them about that. Uh, but we'll be moving in a couple of weeks, so, you know, <laughs> do I want to have an argument with Telstra for no reason? We'll see. Uh, I love having arguments with Telstra. I used to work for them years and years and years ago. But anywho, uh, let's try and get on with a tutorial because I know you're all mega keen to try, have a look at this turning template and what we can do with it. Uh, as I said in one of my earlier um, tr attempts at this video today, uh, there are many companies who produce similar templates. Uh, there's not much to it. People have been making them out of cardboard and um, scrap bits of um, uh, you know acetate or PVC or plastic and all kinds of things for years and years and years. So uh, nothing new to the craft world. Um, it's just something that we wanted to put out and uh, make use of in our tutorials and in our crafting. So I hope you are ready to enjoy. We have got uh, on the table today, um, I'm just going to switch one of my yeah. one of my streams so that I can actually see what's going on and I can see some comments. Uh, so hello Judy, hello Margaret, hello Carrie, Carrie's here, hello, long time no see, although I have watched your videos. Um, excellent, we're back, we're streaming, at least Facebook's working. Um, so we have got the Kaiser Craft uh, cardstock in the May Craftanoon box so we've got guacamole, we've got caramel, and we've got this beautiful dusty ready orange, which is called Marrakesh. So don't mind that I've hole punched a few holes. That was from last week's tutorial. Um, so we've got those to use. I'm just going to put them out of my way for the moment. We've got some smooth white Kazercraft cardstock. Uh, these I've already cut down to four inches by four inches, which is the size that you'll sort of the size you'll need for your um, uh, turning template. It can be bigger, but we'll go through that. Uh, I've got some of the vellum. I don't know if I'm gonna use this. I did use it in my example card, so we might see how we go with that. So the thinner one in your kit is 110 GSM, and the thicker one, that is very noisy, uh, that one is 150 GSM. So we've got that in there as well that we might play with today. I've got a couple of our A6 size card bases, so scored, ready for you just to fold over and burnish and you've got your little card there. I've got envelopes. Uh, I have got our Kaiser Craft glitter tape in mint colour and it doesn't show up particularly well on screen. It is a very pale mint colour, um, so it's not too overpowering, which is why I kind of like it. Uh, we've got our Kaiser Craft Pearls, again in ice green. I have to I have to check that one because I keep wanting to say mint green and it's not. Uh, I have a, some of our gold and white twine. I have got 
some of these. <laughs> this is one of the sheet out of the beautiful Paper Rose Studios um, set of papers, which is, um, it's called Nature Stroll. Um, so the full pack of papers, you've got this pack here. So you've got all these beautiful uh, colours and patterns. So in each of your kits, you've got one piece of each. Uh, so six double-sided uh, pieces of paper. They're all stunning and they're super thick. But one of the sheets in there is this one. Um, and it normally comes with the green strip at the bottom. I've just been, I think there's a darker purple as well. Um, I've obviously been making things with this one already. So there's a few extra uh, bits on the bottom and some items that you can fussy cut out and stick to your cards if you like. Basically, I'm just going to be using the sentiments from these today. Uh, I don't need any of the fussy cutting and you know how I feel about fussy cutting. I'm very fussy about fussy cutting and I do not like it. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, and I have got these beautiful, uh, they're tiny, tiny stamps. You can see based on the size of my thumbnail, and I don't have very big hands, uh, that most of these stamps are kind of, you know, thumbnail size or smaller. So they are quite, quite mini, and you're going to see why we've chosen this one particularly um, when we get into using the turning template. Uh, so these stamps are, uh, the, the stamp set is called Romantic Roses, and it's by a company called Precious Marika. Um, and they are from Holland. Uh, so I hunted high and low to try and find something that was had enough in stock, uh, but also had plenty of these little uh, stamps that we can use in the turning templates because it's really important. Um, you know, you've got to think about uh, the size of your card um, and obviously, you know, the, the, the quantity of things that you want to stamp onto that. Um, and actually, I should probably show you the, uh, the example. So by the time you're looking at something like this, you know, you, they need to be quite small uh, to be able to fit that many on and kind of create this little um, circular pattern. So we've got that and then we've got the turning template. Hard to see on camera, but it is uh, slightly coloured so that you can't, uh, can't you'll probably still get it lost on certain surfaces and I know that that's often a uh, an issue. Um, yeah, fussy cutting is a swear word, Carrie. Oh my God, Carrie, you just frightened me because when you said I said a swear word, I was like, really? I'm, I really try hard not to swear <laughs> on my lives. Um, I am a bit of a potty mouth in real life, um, but I try I try not to. Uh, it, it is offensive to some people. Um, so you, you can see on our turning template, we have uh, etched into it. So we've got the Paper Crafting Australia on this side and just the four inch turning template on the right. So I've, uh, I've engraved that in because I wanted you to be able to remember without having to measure what size of cardstock you need to be able to fit inside this template, whether it's on the diamond or the square presentation side. So let's try and have a go at, we'll have a look at, We'll get started. Um, I've got a bunch of Gina K uh, inks. Uh, obviously, these five at the top are the first five that we've got. So January, February, March, April, which is our black amalgam ink, and then May, which is our gorgeous apple mint colour. Um, so it is almost fluorescent. Uh, it's a, a very interesting colour. Um, not necessarily the, the colour that I would have chosen amongst this palette. These are the rest of the colours that are coming through the rest of this year's Craftoon box. Um, so not in any particular order because we are struggling with getting stock of each one at the right time. So I have to keep mixing and matching and moving the boxes around, which is a nightmare. Um, but this one is Blue Raspberry, we've got Wild Dandelion, Tangerine Twist, Cherry Red, Soft Stone, and this one, even though it's got a black top on it, it is actually a white pigment ink. Um, I, don't know, I, was gonna say, I don't know if I've opened that one, but that one is there. And of course, you know, yes, there are 12 months in the year and there's one missing in here, and that is our embossing ink. So that one isn't a Gina K ink. Um, and if you're wondering, this is a little tray that I 3D printed myself just recently. So um, that's kind of what I'm keeping my inks in at the moment. Uh, so let's get started with the turning template. So you are going to need uh, a stamp tool. Uh, so for this one, I've got our Couture Creations Precision Precision Stamp Press. I need to slow down a bit. I'm, I'm feeling a bit flustered now that everything went pear-shaped at the start. <laughs> um, but we will get there. I'm just 
jumping up to grab. I just wanted some washi tape um, to be able to hold my turning template. I've got, got magnets, that's helpful. Um, but in this uh, stamp press, it doesn't have, this is the only thing that I don't enjoy about it, otherwise it's fantastic. There's no ledge. There's a ledge this side, uh, but there's no ledge at the top or the bottom to, uh, to stop it from moving. Um, so all I am going to do is just grab a bit of grab a bit of this one. I'm just going to line it up because I do like to at least have things lined up. So I've lined it up with that line, and I'm just going to just going to tape it to my stamp press so that it doesn't wiggle and move, and and my um, piece of cardstock that goes in the middle of this is going to stay there where I want it while I'm stamping. So that's, oops, that's all we need to do with that one. I do need to breathe, Carrie. It's, uh, it's a bit of a moment. I'm just going to have a sip of water. That might calm me down a bit. Alrighty, so for the first card, I'm just going to take a 4x4 four four inch piece of white cardstock. Now this could be any coloured cardstock. It doesn't have to be white. Uh, I'm just doing it because it just makes it easier to see um, with what we're doing at the moment. I'm just gonna bang a little magnet in there just to keep that card from jumping out. And you'll, you'll notice that the, uh, the acetate actually gives it a little bit of a groove so that you can slide it in there, but then it's not gonna, even if I take that off, you can kind of give it a bit of a push and it's not gonna wiggle it around. So I'm gonna pop that on there. I'm going to get my stamps uh, and I think, so you can kind of see where we're going with this. We're just going to make a little kind of wreath type uh, display. Um, I am going to go back in with this little rose from up the top. It was a really nice size. Uh, I'm also going to grab this little leaf that's up in the top right hand corner as well. So these two are all coming from, maybe keep them on screen would be handy. And that's kind of all I'm going to use for this one for just for the first one, just to give you an idea um, and also to make it a little bit quick uh, to be able to do. Uh, you will then find that there's lots of different ways that you can uh, increase the, um, the difficulty uh, of the project uh, once you kind of get going. I'm just giving these stamps, I think I've used this one already, so it's not too bad. Um, but I'm just giving it a bit of a rub and a bit of a condition just so that it's ready to take some ink. Uh, this one I've already inked and you can see it's been with a white, maybe it's been with a red, <laughs> a red ink because it has stained the stamp, which does not change its effectiveness one little bit. Alrighty. So what you're going to do, and obviously, you know, you can see that you need to stay within the uh, the circle, um, or the circle needs to stay within the square shape of your cardstock. Uh, now, what you will find is if you put your cardstock in, in the square orientation, it's going to work much, much better than if you were to start with your cardstock in the diamond position. Um, and the reason for that is that if you, if I was to put my stamp here, and I want to make an eight sided pattern. When I move my cardstock into the next slot and I stamp, it's not actually going to hit my paper at all. Move that across so it's not. So if you start within the, the cardstock being in, a, in the square orientation, it's going to come out a lot nicer for you. Now, the other thing I'm going to do when I start with this one is I'm going to bring it in about a, well, it's about a centimetre and a half, 15 mil from the edge, uh, just so that when I then go into putting these sprays in between, um, you know, I've got the ability to kind of angle it out a bit and it's not going to run off my page. I'll have a little bit of play there. So I'm kind of going roughly in the middle. It's just because I want it a little bit symmetrical. And I'm just going to close the door, pick up my stamp. Give it a bit of a push, make sure it's going to stay there for me. And pop my magnet back down. Take my ink pad. Just use your stamp press the way you would normally. 
press it down and you've got, got the first one. So then what you're going to do is take your magnet off, take your cardstock out. Uh, now this depends on how many turns you turn it, will depend on how you're wanting your um, image to come out. So I'm just going to turn it one turn, put it on the diagonal into the diamond shape, pop it back down. Don't move your stamp, just ink it back up, close the door, stamp away. And I'm just going to do this eight times where I only move it one slot. So this time it's coming from a diamond orientation across to the square orientation. Ink my stamp back up again. And repeat, keep going going to do this for this project at least and I know you lovelies are going to get super super creative with what you can do with this once you've had a bit of a play. Close again and it does get to be quite meditative just going round and round and round in circles and stamp 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 stamp. Um, once you get comfortable you may find that you are clever enough to be able to put multiple stamps in different positions on your stamp door uh, and you can stamp them with different colours uh, and you will actually be able to churn these out really, really quickly. Uh, but some people just don't trust themselves to do that and not mess it up. And particularly while I'm doing it on camera, that is me. <laughs> Don't want to make a mess. So it's super simple. Just, just like Dory on Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep stamping. Round and round and round we go. Get back in there. And then we've got eight of those. So that's that part of that stamp done. Just gonna take my tidy towel. This is my Gina K Designs tidy towel. It's just like a wet chamois. So you just keep it damp. It'll wipe the ink off your stamps. It'll wipe it off your work surface. Um, all kinds of things. Um, great kind of thing to use in lieu of baby wipes because uh, you know, you can reuse it, you can wash it, you can throw it in with your towels and other items uh, and away you go. And I feel like there's, there's no comments coming through, so I feel like everyone is head down and stamping like crazy, so that's good. Um, okay, so, and I'm going to make this one a really simple wreath. I'm only going to do, um, I'm, I'm only going to do two stamps in this first example. Um, so I've just taken this little leaf one. And I'm just going to kind of nestle it in here just so it's almost touching but not quite touching. Maybe it is touching. I can't really see from over here. Uh, those two stamps. And as you can see, because when we, when we turned each of these corners, uh, we were putting equal distance between all of the shapes. The, when we stamp this one, it's actually going to fill in all of those little gaps for us. Now, you may want to put more. Um, oh, and I'll just... Should have had my magnet down there. Uh, you may want to then go back and do a third um, shape of stamp. Totally up to you. You can make it as busy or as plain as you like. Hello, Mum. Mum's back. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just going to go in. I've got the Apple Mint ink from Gina K. It's going to Push that one down Ta -da. and we're just going to keep going around the merry-go-round and go from there. Now I want to show you something. So this one I started, so I started this one in the diagonal position. If I was to place this one and go two turns and just pop this down, you can probably already see what's going to happen is that the position of where this one is going to go is going to miss 
one spot and this is the kind of technique that you can use if you're wanting to try and get uh, multiple colors uh, in so say for example I wanted to go back to the original design that I had on the first one which was a pink flower then a purple flower uh, this is how you would go about doing that um, and that is to just use uh, four sides uh, so either the four diamond shapes or the four square shapes for one color and then use the opposite um, setup for the other color that you wanted to do um, so that's how you would kind of achieve that and you I, I know once we stop doing this tutorial today and you all start playing with different stamps that you've got in your stash um, and and different colors of ink and different projects uh, you'll you'll come up with some amazing amazing options so if I was to just do the the four you can see you know I could then go back and put this in the uh, square oops, orientation and I could then go in with a different color and then every second lot of leaves will be a different color to the first lot Hello Tony, welcome back. Never used one of these templates before. Seems reasonably easy. It's actually one of the easiest things uh, to do um, that you'll ever do in stamping. It's a fantastic tool. Uh, as I said before, it's, they've been going around the craft world for ages. Um, it's, you know, they've been made out of paper and cardboard. Um, you know, there were people that were just uh, you know that uh, previously I've seen actual full stamps where it's like they've got grid lines on it and you put it in a position and you tape your cardstock down and then you rotate your stamp on the like by, by rotating your stamp block uh, so that is another way that you can do it if you don't have a stamp press um, item you can uh, you know kind of keep your cardstock in the same position let me get so say for example and this isn't quite the right size but I've got a stamp block and if I had this little stamp on it and I decided to put that here so I've put it in a very specific spot it's like as long as I keep that block equal distance or if I've had a block that was the same size you can just rotate the block uh, you're not going to get as precise a result uh, but it is a way to kind of cheat the process uh, to get a similar kind of effect so crafters have just you know as we do kept on improving uh, the process and you know, the the products that we've got available and gone from there what am I, gonna... I was trying to read comments at the same time as turning things <laughs> Okay. Ta da! So, super quick, super simple. Um, not so much of a nana card, but it is a very elegant, uh, clean way of getting um, a beautiful shape, a nice wreath uh, product for uh, a card. Now, I'm going to pop this one aside because I want to have a go at a little bit more of a mandala kind of effect. Um, let's just. That there. There's my tidy towel. Take that little stamp off there. Now with this one, I'm actually going to stamp these with the black amalgam. Um, and I because I, I kind of want this to be a little bit more like a sketchy uh, type of uh, mandala that I could then perhaps color in uh, using some colored pencils or something like that uh, a little bit later. Uh, so, where's my stamp set gone? Here we go. Yeah, it's a fantastic effect. I really like it. Alrighty. So, I'm going to start. get that one in there at some point so I've got 
in this little guy. So I've used black ink on that one already, so it's uh, it's good to go. I'm going to swap that out for a little rose and. This little flowery flourish. So it's this one here and the little rose next to it. So I've got these two. And what else might I want to put? I might. I mean, this rose is kind of the one that you can use this little stem on here. So you can actually use this stem on all of these little rose buds that we've got going on. So actually, I might. I might get this bigger one from in here as well. So we'll do two sized roses, some of these little guys, and then those at the end. Right, I'm going to start with the bigger one. And actually, these are more solid stamps, so they're not, not actually going to be things that I can colour, but with the amalgam ink, I can actually colour over the top with because it'll be water fast. So this rose here, I'm just putting up. So I've looked at where the centre point is here and made sure that I've got it above that. Uh, and then I've kind of made, made sure that it's centred in the middle. Close enough. Got my amalgam ink. Now again, this is a new stamp, so I'm just going to ink it quite heavily. Pop that over. Now I'm going to turn this and just keep it in the square orientation for the moment. How's, how's everybody's weekend so far? Mine's been stressful. <laughs> I don't know. Technology, man. Stressful. All right, just turning that one. The amalgam ink can take a little bit longer than your normal ink to just dry and set. So I'm just going to try not to get myself into... <laughs> situation where I'm putting my magnet on over the stamping. Normally after a couple of seconds the uh, the regular ink would be done and dusted. I wouldn't need to worry. So that is layer one for me. I am then going to turn this and put it onto the diagonal. Pop that down and grab my little Tidy towel, Gina K. Give that stamp a bit of a wipe down. It's cold. It actually is cold today. It's cold in Melbourne. And I'm just going to fit this one in just between these two. We've got warm spring weather, Margaret. I'm envious. Spring is my favourite time. Oh, that didn't stamp so well. It's the benefit of having it on here because I can go back in and just re-stamp that and fill in the gaps. So I'm going to keep this, as, as I said, with the diamond shape. Spin it around. Just keep going. So with this we're kind of making a mandala and as you change up your stamp and the position of it you can just kind of build as you go further and further out on your cardstock. Now there's nothing to stop you doing eight in a circle as well and I'm going to do that fairly shortly. 
this one because it's such a big heavy kind of stamp I just wanted to kind of start um, start with it a little bit further out um, Margaret it is it's our fall it's autumn um, in Australia uh, so we're getting into cold weather we've had not as hot a summer as we normally would um, so yeah it's going to be uh, probably going to be a really cold winter this year oh Carrie I'm sorry you've had a terrible week I'm hoping some craft therapy will help <laughs> Generally, it helps a little what, a little way, somewhat. Alrighty, so clean off this little guy. Squeak, squeak. It's not quite, you know, nails down a chalkboard, but gets there. Okay, I'm going to try and fit into this one. Just going to pop in these little roses now. So again, now that I've kind of gone around in a full circle, I can find a spot where this is going to fit. Sometimes you just need to reposition your cardstock once you've pulled up a, a stamp because they are a bit sticky. All right, and I'm going to try my luck. And see if I can get see if nah, they overlap. I've put it in a dodgy position, so I'm gonna have to go all the way around in the diamond position and then I can come back and do my um my square positions with these if I want to have roses going all around. Are we going for time? What time is it? Three o'clock, or about halfway through. We'd normally be finished if technology hadn't uh, gotten in my way today. <laughs> oh, crash bang. I hope that was, yep, that was nicely stamped. <laughs> Whoops. Not how I was planning to do it, but there you go. Ta -da. So I'm just going to put this into the square position just for a second because I've done those four. I'm just going to grab my tidy towel and clean this one off. I mean, I could just rip this off and put it aside, but I do like to try and clean where I can. Um, and then I'm going to find a little spot here. Yeah, that one's also going to fit just to fill in. Oh my gosh. Put your magnet on, Tangy. I'll just do a round with these in just to fill up the gap. So you're just kind of working around your own square. Just remember what orientation you are. I almost feel like I need to have like a little flick board that's like. I'm doing diamonds, you know, almost like a <laughs> like a stitch counter for knitting, just to remind you where you're at. But I just need a little switch to say diamonds or squares or a, a hair tie <laughs> to tell me like the netball umpires used to do. Which end is the centre pass meant to go to next? This team or that team? Happy days. Alrighty. I love this just black and white effect. It's starting to look lovely. Oh, Carrie, I could go a warm cup of right now. Are you making? It'd be nice. <laughs> uh, so from here, I'm kind of thinking I might be done just for the moment with these little roses, just at least in this layer. And I am going to kind of pop one of these 
Little. Flowery kind of bits. Pop these in. Now we're cooking. We went and had a look at the house this morning, everybody. We now have an approximate date. For completion which is less than a month away the 4th of June and then actual handover about a week later depending on how quickly our bank can come out and have a look at it uh, but it's going to be a mad rush because the builder has not done anything in the last two weeks um, so we went out and saw it went out and had a sneaky look last weekend but um, it's been two weeks since we've been out with the builder and he didn't understand why I was grumpy today because he told us two weekends ago that our floors were getting done the week before the week that's just been. Um, so I was, ang I, was, I was upset about that um, and he, he just doesn't seem to understand that he's lost a week because he was like, no, no, the floor was only supposed to go in this week. And it's like, no, no, you told us two weekends ago that the floor was going in that week. So he's a little bit, a little bit hard to, uh, hard to get communi good communication with. Um, and he, he doesn't kind of understand anything. Drives me nuts, can't wait to be rid of him, but the house is coming along. There's just not a lot that's been done, but they're going to be doing flooring and a whole lot of stuff this week. So we'll see. Famous last words, hey, but yeah, it's all coming together. Oops, that did not stamp fully. That's a bit better. So we'll see. See how it goes. So you know how you do your little mandala doodles? You know, this is just like a stamping version of that. Just keep making the picture bigger and bigger and bigger until you're happier with it. Fill in the gaps. Away you go. And definitely this, just the monochrome stamping, doesn't have to be black, just one colour uh, is quite a nice effect, I think anyway. Weather's been warm in Wollongong. Well, that's good, Tony, but it's dropped today. Carrie, where are you at? The shooting range. Yeah, keep your head down. <laughs> we want you in one piece. Oh, my gosh, you turned the heater on. Sharon, what's going on? I tell you what, in the new house, uh, like here in the house that we're in at the moment, it has been cold as... But in the new house, like we've been over to the new house and it kind of, you, you just walk in and you're just like, oh yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel uncomfortable or like it actually just feels like a house should, you know, kind of cozy enough, don't need a heater on. So different to this house. So different. Um, all right, guys, what am I going to put in? Uh, this ink doesn't dry too. It's not too fast, Margaret, but it's not. This is the amalgam ink, so it does take a little bit longer to dry. Uh, but the Gina K inks in general dry pretty quickly. Uh, they are quite good in that regard. Now, I'd, earlier I'd picked up this little one, but now I don't know if that's what I want. I'm just going to put him aside for a sec, I think. I think I'm going to use one of these little flourishes. Just give it a bit of a rub. And, uh, clean it up a bit. I don't know if it's going to fit here. Not too big. All right, there goes that idea. This happens sometimes, you know, you just get it wrong. Um, what about this little 
a bunch of leaves. Yeah, that might work. Okay. Yeah, you can dry it with a heat tool if you are that impatient, Sharon. <laughs> I wonder where my impatience came from, everybody. There's a mother that heat dries all of her craft stuff because she can't wait for it to dry. That being said, this is very close on my desk. <laughs> it's within arm's reach, so I'm not not too far from it at all times. Round and round and round we go. Where we stop? Well, we better stop at a certain point. Right, let's keep going endlessly. those four and I'm just gonna see if I've left just enough space in this little nook in here have I left yeah just enough space there now bearing in mind that I'm probably going to have to reposition to put it in here so I highly doubt that I've done this in no nah, that's not going to be in the right spot um kind of happens see what I mean like once you get into those outer edges it really has to be either diamond shapes or square shapes to get into the little gaps that you've left it's almost starting to look like a mosaic tile is a pretty cute effect. Oh, thanks, Mum. Saying it looks cute. I'm kind of wondering if we're actually going to get a record of this uh, this tutorial today with all the tech difficulties that have gone on. I'll have to try my luck in a little while and see tomorrow when I come back to it if it's if it's recorded. Alrighty, clean this one down. We're nearly there, friends. Right. Line that down. Do you know there's probably a thing that's like the other one is the opposite way? There's an opposite one, guys. It fits. I'm going to clean so many stamps after this today. <laughs> Just using them all. I'm actually super keen to have a play with some of the big square ones that are on the on the sheet of stamps, like these stained glassy type ones, and see how like putting those in a pattern might look that will be fun it's going to be uh, lots of uh, experimenting and it's going to end up being double-sided pieces of card like I'm going to stamp on both sides just to have a bit of a play and then I'll just choose the best one and <laughs> make that into a card or just leave it in my stash and when I'm looking for something to put on the front of a card at some point one of them will come out and be the thing that I do Right. Okay. Actually, do you know what? That gap in the middle is starting to bother me in that it's just too open and blank. This is the joy of stamping and the joy of using a bit of a tool, a turning template and a 
um, a stamp platform because you can come back in and fill in the gaps. Um, where do I fit in here? I'm going to have to tuck them fairly close in there. Oops, this is going to be tight. see because I'm not in the best place that I should be but let's see how we go y'all let's put a magnet on I'm saying that the whole time and not doing it <laughs> so that's me I can't wait to see what you guys make with these because I think you're going to have a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And there's so many varieties. All you need to do is just find a small enough stamp that you can, you know, do this kind of design and then just go for it. Keep your eye out for small stamps though because often we think of small stamps as being not very helpful. Um, but for something like this, they are mega helpful. You often look at it and go, oh, I'm going to have to stamp that so many times for it to be anything that I don't want to bother. Yeah, I, did, did, did that fill the middle enough for you, Margaret, or do you still think it needs another, another little bit in the middle of that again? I think I might put I think I might put a um just a little jewel or something in the middle of that. Alright, I'm gonna clear some stuff Oops. out of my way, out of my way. I'm done with stamps, they can go away. Um, oops, oh dear, things going everywhere. Alright, let's get this onto A card front. Now I'm going to show you something because obviously this is white on white and I, I don't mind that um, but obviously what we've created is with this piece is a smaller piece than um, the full width of the card. So what I'm actually going to do is just put myself like I know that's four inches and what are we for? So we need to go to four and one eighth, I think. I've got magnets getting stuck to things. Gosh, clean your act up, Tangi. Let's have a look. Get a border around that. Yeah, that's going to need to be. Let's go four and three sixteenths and see how we go with that. I'm actually just going to take my folded card, pop it into my guillotine, so just pop it in there. I've just turned it into a square card. So there's some stamping card stock that you can do for something later on. But we don't always have to try and make the right size. To fit and um, so I've just got my Couture Creations double-sided tape here just thought I'd mix it up a little bit because you can you know add a belly band and add some other bits and pieces to it a la that one that I did as a bit of a, an example But there's nothing wrong with chopping your card down if it's a you know if it's not a card that you've you know you can cut directly out of cardstock um, and make it the right size from the get-go then just chop it down okay All white at the moment, white on white on white. The tapes there. Okay. 
because it's like hopefully I haven't put my big fingers in and smudged it on the other side. So we are going to do one more tutorial with um, with the turning template in the month. So we'll do that in we'll do that as the last one for the month uh, because I do want to show you how to do something like this, which extends the uh, the the pattern shape into a longer uh, shape. And there's also another technique that we can do um, to fit a rectangular card. So I really want to kind of take you through. Take you through that so you can get eh, the most out of your turning template and of course you're going to come up with I just need to do this off camera guys because I'm just just getting a bit crooked um yeah I'm sure you'll come up with lots of different ways to use your turning template that suit you and and kind of give you oh man I've got gunk all over me today um yeah, make something that, that means something to you or is, is used in a different way. And I'd love to see how you all um, get to get to use these. But um, I'd love to see this kind of thing for a like a Christmas card or, you know, you could heat emboss with the stamp uh, and, uh, and get some really cool um, patterns and shapes and colours and things out of that. But I think... I'm just going to pop the tiniest of tiny little sentiments in here. It's just going to be just the little word hello. I'm just going to pop that on some foam tape just so that it's something rather than all flat. Ooh, that's running away. Kind of covers up my little gap in the middle, and then if I grab my tweezers, all right, gang, where are we putting them? Whoop, whoop, not there, over here, just on the bottom of this little flourish. Could have put it on the top of it, I suppose, just to dress it up just a little bit. I mean, if it was a different colour, it would be a different story. Oops, come back. Come back, you little thing. There we go. So it's pretty simple. It's got not a lot of embellishment on it. I could probably go a little bit harder with some more pearls. Uh, but really, the 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 technique today is is more about showing you the the use of the turning template and the types of patterns that you can get out of it. So obviously, oops, bit of tape. This kind of thing um, that you can turn into anything. Uh, so you can use one color, you can use multiple colors, um, you can heat emboss. Uh, we will play again with the heat embossing when we get next month's kit, which is June, so that's about to come out to you. Um, so in June we will do some heat embossing if we'd like to kind of go back to this kind of turning template uh, style of project and see how that comes up with some heat embossing. We can definitely do that. Um, so we'll have a bit of a play with that. But I hope uh, that you have some fun using your turning template. Um, and that uh, you can all share your projects with us on our Facebook page for Paper Crafting Australia. Sorry for the technical glitches earlier today. Um, the tech gods were not with us today, but we, we got around them. So yay, take that Telstra. Um, yeah, so I will see you back here next week for uh, another um, project. Uh, I don't even remember. What, well, no, I do remember. We're doing a triangle fold card next week. Uh, so that'll be exciting. Something completely different and not like anything that we've done uh, with our regular tent fold and, you know, card fold uh, type of thing. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm just going to have a quick check. No, no, 
know, comments, everybody's madly stamping and, and, uh, and turning and <laughs> stamping and turning and stamping and turning. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you're after any of the products that we had in this, uh, this episode, uh, I'll update the, if the YouTube feed has gone through properly, I'll update the description so that the items are all listed there. Uh, and you can find those on our store at papercraftingaustralia.com. Until next week, I'll see you then. Have a wonderful weekend and a brilliant week. Thanks. Bye.